In recent years, Atlas's Persona franchise has gained rapid popularity, largely due to the amazing Persona 5 reaching record-breaking sales. And despite what Twitter.com slash Twitter would like you to think, this is actually a good thing. In 2016, the little RPG studio that could finally defied all odds and released the game they spent half a decade trying to perfect. What was once a niche franchise of games at best has entered the mainstream and finally reached financial success. And as a longtime Atlas fan, I couldn't be happier for everyone involved. At least that's what I'd like to say. In reality, this has truly been the darkest of days for fans of real Atlas games. The days are beginning to feel like weeks, and the weeks are beginning to feel like days since we had a good game published by the Atlas conglomerate. Long gone are the days of quality over quantity. Instead, it's just Persona 5, and Persona 5, Persona 5 over and over again. We thought they'd never milk it as hard as P4 did, but oh. We are way past those levels of milk. It's, it's just legitimately disgusting how Atlas shoves Joker into every game they can think of. Oh, would you look at that? He's in Sonic Forces, Catherine, Smash Brothers, Star Ocean and Animus, Grand Blue Fantasy, Puzzle and Dragons, Identity Vi, Fantasy Star, Lord of a Million, Kia Tobo Kotabu Flat, Another Eden, Sword Art Online, Memory Defrag, Dragalia Lost, probably. Man, I just miss the good old days where we got some of the best games nobody ever bought. Remember Demi Kids? Remember Revelations? Remember Roaned? I'm a ah. 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 Remember Karate Kid? Now Atlas is mainstream, and all is lost. There's nothing to look forward to anymore. But SMC5 is coming out next year. No, no, that will be bad too. They will never get another game that isn't Persona 5 ever again. Why even live? Have you heard this before? I have. This back and forth's been going on for a while now, and I'm kind of tired of hearing about it. Either Atlas are gods and Persona 5 is a masterpiece, or... They are past their prime and plan to milk Persona for all it's worth. And man, I just want to talk about that. That thing. The milk. You saw the thumbnail. I don't know why you click on these things. But to get where I am coming from as an individual, we got to go back in time. The 2014. Malice released its very first teaser for P5, a bunch of chairs with no context, which led to years and years of Reddit detectives to speculate on the hidden symbolism that frankly wasn't even there to begin with. Well, I think we can all agree that these are chairs, right? But at this same Atlas event, they revealed plans for three other spin-off games to hold us over until Persona 5's release. Now you gotta remember, Persona being milked or not wasn't even a question at this point. The only spin-off we had was P4A, which was well-loved at the time. And Shin Megami Tensei games were also coming out at a reasonable speed. And with Persona 4 Golden receiving universal praise, I remember one comment saying I'd buy just about anything with a Persona name on it at this point. Now, with hindsight, you could just dismiss this guy as a fanboy, but I remember this being the general sentiment at the time. The quality of content Persona fans were receiving at the time had been overall exceptional. It was good times all around, and I hate this word and I can't believe I put it in the script, but the hype for Persona 5 was understandably high as a result. But Persona 5 took a long time to come out, and the Persona 4 content was rampant. You had Persona Q featuring Yu Narakami from Persona 4, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, Persona 4 Anime again, and it's worse than the first time, six billion Persona 4 manga and the literal garbage Detective Nawato! How is this canon? What? Some people like to refer to this as the Golden Age, because Persona 5 didn't exist yet. But after time went on, fans began to grow more and more impatient with the milking of Persona Force characters and setting. The multimedia campaign is a common tactic in Japanese media, and if something has proven to be popular enough, it won't take too long for an anime announcement, a game announcement, merchandise galore to cash in on the property's projected sales figures. But in Alice's case, the milking was almost a necessity. Persona 5 was delayed. A lot and was clearly going to take a good chunk of time to complete for many reasons. 
corporate was naturally afraid they would lose the fans' attention if they didn't put out something with a Persona name on it. Honestly, the milking of P4 was there for multiple reasons. Primarily to make money, <laughs> but can you blame them? This is your first hit in years. Literal lightning in a bottle. Wouldn't you do the same for your company? Which has more than its fair share of financial troubles. Persona offered consistency and introduced many people to the Atlas brand. And as a fan of their works, I'm happy they adapted to new mediums to bridge the gaps between their major game releases. But God dang! The rate at which Atlas is pushing specifically Persona games out has been heavily accelerated in recent years. I, I don't even think you're aware, but here's some fun trivia for you. Since September 16th, 2016, Atlas has released 13 video games. Wow, that's a lot. Now, excluding any enhanced ports, remake, whatever the frick Reddit wants to call them nowadays, from this list, we have two Etrian Odyssey games and Aegis Rim, which isn't even made by Atlas, but it, I put it on the list anyways. The remainder of this list is nothing but Persona games. Not a single mainline Shin Megami Tensei game in sight. Do you see the problem here? If you don't like Persona 5 all that much, you essentially had no new games to play for nearly half a decade. That's bad. It's hard not to be a little disappointed in them. Don't get me wrong, I like Persona 5. Heck, my avatar on YouTube is the guy from the box, all right? But seriously, I like other Atlas games too. I'm really afraid of the games entering the realm of franchise fatigue, which is a very real possibility at this rate. Now, I'm gonna pretend you know what the dump like franchise fatigue is, okay? I know you know what it is, but let's pretend you're like a stupid baby on your mom's phone, all right? So like, okay, listen here, you stupid baby. Remember Mega Man? Probably not, he's 33. But this guy used to be in all kinds of games, some good, some bad, and hey, he was even in Madden, look at that. One of my favorite Mega Man games was a spinoff of the main Mega Man series called Battle Network. Because, you know, it was an RPG. Like, you know, I was overweight. Like Also, it had a shark guy. He was a really cool looking shark. Now I think about it, I don't think that's really relevant to what I'm talking about. I remember playing the game on the playground one day, and this guy in the fifth grade telling me, Oh, wow, you like that game too? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Wait, why are you playing the first game? You do know Japan already has Battle Network 5, right? And Battle Network 6 was just announced! Then he beat me up and stole my lunch money because I was obese. My little stupid baby brain couldn't even comprehend that many games. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Let me explain. Capcom is pumping out multiple Mega Man games annually. More games than fans even had the time to play, let alone money to afford to buy. Yearly releases can be a real slippery slope. If you're supplied it meets demand, then great. Mad money for everybody. But if the scales tip even just a little bit, chaos can ensue. Assassin's Creed is another fun example. They had an awesome gameplay format people loved. Then they made it again, and again, and again. And nowadays you hear people say, Oh man, the Assassin's Creed game was surprisingly good this year! What? What? How did... How does it even get that way? What I'm getting at here is Persona's quickly becoming a yearly franchise. There's a risk of being milked dry if they don't chill out. Making a game concept, writing characters and a narrative, and drawing all the art for the game, that crap takes time, dude. And creativity. You just can't do that yearly with Persona. There's so many pieces of the puzzle that can go wrong, man. You can't just rush that kind of thing. And I'm afraid that's what's gonna happen. When we were talking about the Golden Age, most of those things were reviewed and received well by fans. Except for that god dang terrible Detective Nawato character assassination! Uh but even I'll admit, Malice has been dropping the ball a bit far too often for my liking. And really, the biggest issue that comes to mind is... Timing. Ironically enough, the biggest enemy to the Persona franchise is the calendar itself. Wow. I'm stupid. Look, all this bullcrap came out in 2018. That's only a two-year gap from P5's initial release. Which means Alice has basically been working on Persona non-effin' stop. Probably not the same staff that worked on the base game, sure, because if that were the case, then they would be dead by now because of exhaustion. But 
frankly, when comparing all this anime stuff to this anime stuff, the quality franchise fatigue become more apparent. Now I'm just a simple southern everyday let's player, not one of them fancy Los Angeles game reviewers, but uh, help me out. Quality difference is very apparent when you compare the two. P5D is half game, half Microsoft PowerPoint show. God dang, what a letdown. And feels pretty hollow without a story mode to fill up the runtime. Unless you're like just looking for Ryuji's underwear or something. PQ2 also suffers from a rushed final act and honestly just feels worse to play. The special screenings were a really bad replacement for the walk feature in PQ1. You know, the social interaction aspect people play the Persona games for. Also, this is getting kind of nitpicky, but god dang, they really screwed over the Reaper in this game. Which is just sad. In Persona 3, he was a legitimate menace. He really emphasized the role Death played in the story. And in Persona Q, he is the key obstacle you face through the final tower. He's part boss, part puzzle. He was really well done, and I remember thinking his inclusion was neat. Persona Q2, he just sits in a random hallway. It's not even hard. It's just sad, man. Nobody cares about him anymore. I care about him. Poor guy. Wait, didn't he murder people? And lastly, I don't want to talk too much crap about anime because I'm not I'm not an anime reviewer. This is garbage! But also, I feel like it's been done to death. At this point, at least. Also, watching it really speaks for itself, so you could do that if you want. Oh, but don't even get me started on them Blu-ray prices! $300 and that's a sale? Are you kidding? Do you know what I could buy with $300? I could buy food that I don't have! Or, for way cheaper, you could try out this video sponsor, Shark VPN. Internet security is no joke. Hackers and scammers have become more frequent and more skilled at gaining your personal information. I remember one time my Crunchyroll account got hacked. Couldn't freaking watch Naruto. And talking to customer support to get my account that I paid for back took forever. You don't want to be that guy. Nowadays, I use a VPN to encrypt my data. So all those anime fan slash hackers can't steal my accounts I pay good money for. Surfshark VPN encrypts your data using a private network tunnel to make your data more difficult to access from an outside source. This is why many in the tech world are taking the necessary precautions and purchasing VPNs. It's the safest thing to do if you're the type of person who'd be real bummed out losing their Twitter account, YouTube account, all that stuff. Personally, I chose Shark VPN due to the name. R remember the shark we talked about before? Yeah, I kind of I kind of like sharks. But also, Shark VPN is very reasonable for the price and offers what you'd expect from competitors, but for way cheaper. And well, it just got even cheaper. If you use my link below, you can get a 83% discount on your service and 3 extra months for free. So long as you use code CHIMPO at checkout. Now, back to what, what were we talking again? I forgot. I think the main issue here is they didn't stagger their release schedule as well as they did when Persona 4 was getting spin-off material. Granted, you watching at home probably didn't notice this because you're probably not Japanese. I mean, I'm speaking in English. You, you could be, but... In Japan, all this stuff came out in the same year. That's just crazy to me. So how do they fix this? Well... For starters, just give Persona 5 some time to rest. He needs some sleep. And chances are slim he's getting any because the day I write this script, Atlas is already teasing exciting news for Persona's 25th anniversary. Ugh. Some people are begging for Persona 5 Arena, and man, I just can't share that same enthusiasm. Patterns are anything to go off of. Probably won't end well. Super Mystery Announcement X could frankly be anything, but as long as it's not a sequel to freaking stupid, useless Detective Nawato, I hate what you did to my favorite character! Then I guess fans will like it. I just don't like the idea that, oh, Persona 4 had a fighting game, so Persona 5 has to have one as well. Because it really shouldn't work that way. Now they should have the freedom to make whatever side content they want. I think fans will find it enjoyable. 
And if it will sell well, I have insanely high hopes that Persona 5 Scramble will break some new ground, aka not suck. Because really, even though the entirety of this video sounded negative, I really do love the Persona games and hold them in high regard. Fans shouldn't worry about Atlas milking Persona 5. It's more like the shareholders at fault. Stop doing yearly releases, please! I know you have to appease your shareholders, Atlas, and all that good stuff, but... Man, RPGs are a high investment cost, high return sort of deal. A labor of love, if you will. P5 sales might not be anything crazy compared to some AAA games, but... Those merchandise sales sure ain't nothing to laugh at. Sure, a video game is about $60 on release, but... Those giant Weeboo figures are like... Dude, they're expensive. Not, not that I would know what that's like. Uh, and Atlas gets a cut of that, which directly supports the company, which means more money to hire staff to actually help finish SMT probably, I hope, I... So on the topic of milk, yes, the future is a bit uncertain for Atlas, who has more than a couple of projects still to be released, namely, ReFantasy and SMT5. And depending on the performance of those titles, Atlas executives will be more willing to take risks and invest in a non-Persona projects, which... It's a good thing. Also, slight tangent. F buy SMT5 when it comes out, you douchebag. Don't don't be one of those people that goes, oh, it's not Nocturne though. <gasps> Yamai is a good director, okay? He's got a family to feed. He loves demons, okay? Not not literally loves them though. But I know most of the people that are watching this video aren't douchebags. You're just fans of Atlas. Maybe Persona, maybe not. And you just want them to make games that you want to play, whether they be Persona or not. If you buy the spinoffs, you're supporting the idea that, hey, they want more spinoffs, keep at it, guys! And if you don't, then, well, they don't have as much money to make other types of games, which is a bummer. It's a real lose-lose situation. And while I don't have a definitive answer or solution how to fix this, I think the general idea for at least the North American Persona fans is to stop looking backward and start looking forward. Persona 6 will most likely take a very long time to come out, and whether we get more Persona 5 spinoffs or not, we still have other games to look forward to, like SMT5 and ReFantasy. Please, please for the love of God, just give us something else, Atlas. I'm begging. The future is always scary, and it's nice to do what you're more familiar with. But seriously, take a risk. Aegis Rim was one of the most amazing games I've ever played, and it's not a part of a franchise but I decided to purchase the game because Atlas was behind it. Zorda. And at the end of the day, that's all I want. Unique experiences that people will check out. Because hey, I like that Persona game. I wonder what this is about. Yeah. Will Persona 5 Scramble be the final spinoff? Or will the 25th anniversary of Persona Introduce the actual dating sim spinoff we've all been dying to play. Only time will tell. Why am I Squidward? Listen, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, I have a lot of thoughts about the Persona series, and I know it's very oxymoronic to make fun of them for making a, a dancing game, have a slideshow, and then I'm, I basically made it my own slideshow video. But I want to do something for New Year's, just talk about the past, the future, and about... One of my favorite game companies of all time. Hope you guys have a great day. Make sure to use the coupon code down below if you're interested in shocks. And I'll see you guys next time. More videos coming soon. Bye.